Bottom of the seventh, two runs already in, and the Z's lead it eight to seven in a seesaw affair. In 1987, the Denver Zephyrs, Joey Meyer, hit the longest home run in recorded history in baseball, 582 feet. Meyer was known as a power slugger, but this particular home run was probably helped in part by the fact that he hit it at Denver's Mile High Stadium, where the air density is unusually low. In fact, there are 65% more home runs in stadiums at high altitude than at low altitude. In this section will discuss why. Air resistance. The resistance of motion through a fluid. This diagram from the textbook illustrates the basic principles behind air resistance or fluid resistance. In this case, the projectile's weight is also shown. As the projectile moves through the fluid with a velocity v, it has to move fluid out of its path in order to continue its forward motion. As the fluid passes the sides of the projectile, there can also be drag. And then the motion of the projectile through the fluid can also induce formation of eddies, which can rob the projectile of momentum. All of these constitute air resistance. The air resistance we'll study in this class comes in two forms linear air resistance, or Stokes drag, and quadratic air resistance. In the first case, the resistance to motion is proportional to the velocity of the projectile through the fluid. In the second case, it's proportional to the square of the velocity. Either of these two types of air resistance can contribute, depends on the fluid's properties and the properties of the projectile and its velocity. To decide which forms of resistance are important, it's useful to take the ratio of the quadratic form to the linear form. So if this ratio is larger than one, it means the quadratic form dominates. If it's less than one, it means the linear form dominates. You can see here that the ratio depends on the projectile's diameter, d, and its velocity, v, but it also depends on gamma and beta. It turns out that gamma is the fluid's density divided by 4. So gamma is the fluid's density, beta is the fluid's viscosity. And so the quadratic form of air resistance represents how difficult it is for a projectile moving through a fluid to push the fluid out of the way, in which case you need to know the density in order to know that. The linear form has to do with viscous drag within the fluid. So this is uh, the idea that the projectile is moving through sort of a gooey fluid that resists its motion. In example 2.1, the book considers the ratio of the quadratic to the linear drag for several different systems. The first system is a baseball, and in this case the quadratic drag is 600 times larger than the linear drag. This makes sense. The primary form of resistance for a baseball is pushing the, the air out of the way. Air itself is very low in viscosity, and so it's not very gooey. It doesn't resist the motion of the baseball in the same way. Now, it is important to keep in mind that the quadratic and linear resistances, that sort of interaction with the fluid, is a very, very simplified version of what actually happens as a, pass, as a baseball passes through the air. If we only considered quadratic and linear resistances as described here, you wouldn't get really interesting effects on baseballs like curveballs and knuckleballs. All of that requires more advanced interactions with the fluid than we're going to consider here. By contrast, a raindrop falling through the air has a ratio of the quadratic to the linear drag order one. So that means the quadratic drag and the linear drags both contribute about the same for a raindrop. And that's because the raindrop is much smaller, and so the length scales that are relevant for the problem are much shorter than for a baseball. Typically, the viscous force, the linear drag, is more important when the length scales of interest are shorter. And you can see that in the fact that the ratio scales as the diameter of the projectile. So as that diameter gets smaller and smaller, that means that the linear drag gets more and more important. Finally, the book considers a case in which the quadratic drag is much smaller than the linear drag, the famous Millikan oil drop experiment. The video shown here shows another example where the viscous drag is much more important than the quadratic drag, ball bearings falling through corn syrup, you can see larger ball bearings fall faster, and as, we, as we'll see, that has to do with the dependence of the terminal velocity for the linear drag on the size and mass of the falling object.